folks, Kyle here with TDHP Outdoors. Today we're going to start the process of dehairing the hide. Now to do that you need a solution. Uh, the solution I chose to use is going to be lye. Uh, I've already got my mix here, it's already mixed up, and I used an old milk jug to measure it out. And this is what the lye should look like when, uh, when you're done making it. If you guys can see that, you see that color pretty good. It's like a, uh, a goldish goldish yellowish tint to it. It's real dark, real rich looking. And um, if you'd like to know how to make that, I could put a video up because we did, we do have one on it. Uh, really good. I chose to use that over hardwood ash because hardwood ash I've had, I, I tried it before and I just had really bad results. And all the sanding, I mean you can use a pumice for rock and, um, or stones or different type of stones, uh, sandpaper, you know, when your hide's done. but then it doesn't look uniform anymore. You know, you have light spots, dark spots. I mean, it's just a nightmare. It's a mess. And and even and even if you use it, and uh, just real quick, and touch on that, when you're dehairing, when you're actually using whatever you're using to dehair your hide with, you know, when you when you get that grain off, you're gonna have a nice white hide. But what's gonna happen is is all that fur, all that hair is still gonna going to be coming in contact with that surface and you know whatever you're using for gloves and the, and the water itself the, the solution itself is going to have the ash build up in it so whatever you're moving around or you're handling the hide you're just going to create dark spots and it's just a nightmare um, I just had really bad results with it so I just stand clear of it, of it and this stuff really works you know your hides white this stuff doesn't affect it at all and it stays white so that's my take on hydroid ash versus the, uh, straight lye water. So I'm going to stay with the liquid lye water instead of um, using the coals and stuff like that. So we got our bin here. We got about six gallons of water and uh, a gallon of uh, of lye, and we got our hide here. Uh, our hide's been sitting out, so it's, it's relatively stiff. So I'm going to work the hide a little bit. And guys, remember, if you're using this stuff, any, any type of solution, any type of irritant. Um, you know, anything you buy from a tannery or whatever, anything with a chemical in it, make sure you wear your gloves, make sure you wear your safety uh, glasses. You know, it's not worth, you know, especially a hobby, you know, you're doing it once in a while, it's not worth your health. Because you know, once you lose your health, you have nothing. So you know, be safe out there. And basically, you're just going to keep moving it until it's really pliable. Um, you could have done this a different way. You could have, uh, depending on what kind of tan you're going to be doing, uh, if this was like a pickle tan, you know, uh, for a hair on tan, you would you want to have a, some type of a salt solution uh, with like a safety acid, you know, to set the hair in. But the hair, the hair is coming off. The uh, the dermis layer is going to be coming off. So this is how we do it, and we get really good results this way. So we're going to continue doing it our way. Now we're just going to let that sit. And now you can place rocks on here, uh, send the blocks, uh, cut yourself a piece of plywood to fit your your container. And whatnot, and then weigh it down. But I got enough water in here where it's it's submerged, and I'll come out and check it periodically, and make sure it's not uh, no part of the hides above the water because you don't want that to happen. Because uh, that's how uh, bacteria and everything will start. So we're gonna leave it in here. And what I like to do is I like to add a pound of salt in, into this mix, and uh, the, the salt will help kind of preserve it. That way, there. Uh, no bacteria will really start just in case you gotta leave it in there for an extra uh, day or two but for some reason I find the salt really helps helps a lot so like I said we're gonna continue working this until all of it is submerged just like that we'll uh, kind of rotate it have it all sit on its folds, just like that. There you go. And there it is. And now that'll sit in there. Now I'm gonna leave this in here for about four days, and on the second day, second or third day, I'll come out and I'll, and I'll tug on the hair. You know, once you can actually pull the hair off, you know, relatively easily, then it's ready, ready to be uh, dehaired. So, like I said, that's that. This is the first stage. 
We'll, we'll flip this over one more time. Just like that. And then uh, you're good to go. Now you just want to set this. And now if if it's cold out and uh, you know it's below like 30 or whatever, you you might want to keep this in. Uh, if you have the salt in there, it's not gonna freeze up on you. But if uh, if you can keep it in like a room temperature, like in a garage or in your cellar or something like that, either in a heated garage, um, it, it's ideal. You know, you don't want the, the it to freeze up on you because the top layer will freeze. But keep it in in a room temperature, and uh, you, you should be good to go. And like I said, keep it in there for about four days. Uh, check the air periodically, and then and even even during the course of those four days, you want to come out and kind of kind of agitate it a little bit, move it around, really get that solution through that hair because um, that that's what it's meant to do. You know that that's ultimately what's going to kind of take that hair hair loose from that dermis layer it is the solution. So you just want to kind of mix it up a little bit. So we're going to keep doing this. So obviously, uh, you know, when I'm talking about what I'm doing here, obviously I'm not an expert, uh, professional, whatever you want to call it. You know, I do this for fun, and I get good results, so I'm going to continue doing it. So, so if you see that I'm making a mistake or I should do a step first, I mean, you know, comment on it or whatever. But like I said, I've been tanning skins for a while now, and I've had really great results, really good leather. I've actually sold leathers, and. Uh, and no, no complaints. We make finger tabs, arm guards. We make all types of leathers. We have our own tanning solution that that we make up. So it works for me. You know, I found my little niche and, and what I like to do for a hobby. So I'm gonna continue doing it. And I hope you guys can, will subscribe and uh, come along the journey with me. You know, we're gonna have a lot of things. We're gonna have a lot of things going on this year. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of kid hunts. We're gonna get the kids out in the field. I mean. It's better to get them out in the woods than have them sit all day on an Xbox or a PlayStation or whatever it is. You know, it just that's, it really burns my ass when that happens. You know, get them out in the field, get learning. You know, bushcraft. You know, teach them how to build a fire safely. You know, anything. You know, anything that they could use. You know, if like something was to happen. You know, and, and any any type of outdoor skill is, is good to have. You know, especially if if you're into like hiking and stuff like that. It's like. I mean, that's for another video. We'll, you know, we'll, I, I got a bunch of them. We talk about all types of different stuff. So we'll save it for that, you know. But this is it. This is the um, the, the first step in the herring your hide. And I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. And I hope it helped. And um, if you'd like to, like I said, if you want to know how to make this live water, this live solution, I'd be more than happy to post a video on it because we do have one. And uh, it works great. It works really good. So. Again, just a tip on how to start dehairing your hide. Uh, this is the first step, and thank you for watching. This is TDHP Outdoors.